to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. The Bible says the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and they will give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. We are watching darkness before us and we are pretending it is not there. We are watching a woman barren, her daughter barren, granddaughter barren. We say nothing is happening. How can you say nothing is happening? A grandmother raped by someone the mother raped by someone the granddaughter raped by someone you say nothing is happening find a way to believe it early in your life that there are controlling powers they don't attack you they are not interested in you they attack territories there are spirits that attack you there are spirits who don't even know who you are they were allocated to a territory when jesus was about to cast the spirit they begged him not to leave the territory we can leave the man but keep us in the territory <laughs> hallelujah please listen to what i teach you this is the redemption of our children is the preservation of God's program within our land. There is a spirit now that attacks age ranges from 10 to 18. Once you are more than 18, it does not disturb you. It's like Satan has plotted his graph and found out that the most useful age range now are our teenagers. He's not disturbing babies. He's not disturbing the young people. The old people already, they're already there. But those teenagers... I know this by the widespread pattern in our teenagers. Their resentment for God, their obsession for technology, their outspoken, that the vocal defiance that they have is the spirit of rebellion. And we are watching, saying nothing is happening. One day my child will grow and a child of 12 shouting at his mother and while he's doing it from every territory, they are doing it. There is a spirit making it happen. Do you believe what I'm sharing? There are some of us, we cannot talk to our younger brothers or sisters now. We are 10 years older than them, but you dare not open your mouth to talk to them. You just think they are being stubborn. No! It's a spirit. The spirit of defiance. The spirit of rebellion. When those age ranges become our governors and our senators, that's when you will see the full assault of darkness ah but not when we are alive mm -mm. Mm -mm. God has men Elisha said tell no man to come and let him know there is a prophet in Israel not there is a God in Israel hallelujah you do a program now and you want to put it on mainstream TV if there is the name Jesus there is the name Holy Spirit. There is the name eternal life. It falls under the same category as some of those words that we, they don't allow to be pronounced. Including God, Jesus. Ah. You tell a preacher to preach and there's no name Jesus. There's no salvation. There's no God. There's no redemption. What is he preaching? The most destructive manifestation of demons 
is their ability to manipulate the thinking of men it's not their ability to inflict sickness no that's cheap it's not their ability to bring death that's cheap but to keep a man alive and to hijack them whom the god of this world who blinded their mind the god of this world there are gods that station within territories there are territories where you don't find old men the oldest man is 43 because anybody that crosses it dies i've seen territories like that there are territories where all their men are dead the territory is full of women because all the men die some of you know what i'm talking about it was only the male figures in your family the devil took their lives away and left the women was it not the firstborn male that was killed when moses was born not women was it not the firstborn male two years and above that was killed when jesus was born imagine all those women it's a principle so mothers are becoming both mothers and fathers because controlling powers are there and while that is happening we are laughing you know i've told you about a saying in my village that when you see your neighbor's beard on fire get water and soak your own don't laugh the same fire is coming to you we must pray oh we must pray there are spirits we must pray when i came i was asking it me about the testimony of the dear lady one a precious lady that i came i met i saw you people so excited and i wanted to know what was going on and when he told me the story i said you see it now and someone would tell that lady that the only attack she has is the one in her mind are you joking are you joking I've seen demons so this is not something I'm just talking I've seen them the first time I saw a real physical demon it was then in the campus I was at going to the back of a generator there used to be a generator there and as soon as I turned I saw a real spirit and he said get back that's what he told me I'm not talking nonsense that was you read in a storybook they are not cunningly devised fables. I've seen these spirits. They are real. I know what they do on earth. I know what they do in families. There are controlling powers that destroy marriages. If you do not stand your ground, I love you, I love you is nonsense. Just keep going. One day you will wake up and see the same woman you love that was there for you. And this spirit will land on your head like a mantle. And you see what happens to you. What of men who kill their children? Have you not seen a trend recently now? A trend of rape. Rape. Huh? That all these guys just come and just rape ladies. Do you think those guys are just driven by desire? Are they not prostitutes? No. It's more than desire. It's a spirit. There is something it seeks to do. Sodomy is a spirit. You know that, right? There is something it does. And pleasure is not one of it spiritual intelligence we need to stay and ask god to teach us wisdom let us know his ways hallelujah i know territories where when you rise up if you dare open your mouth and say everybody come and celebrate with me see what the lord has done from that day you must go down joseph told his brothers i had a dream it's not my fault i went to bed and i had a dream the sun the moon 11 stars and the brother said that's all right they were the ones who were going to kill him listen we must learn to pray these spirits out of the way we must learn to pray these distractions you see the things that are happening in zaria now some of the developments the roads don't you think it's technology that is bringing it? It's a signature of the prayer of the saints. Shut down the prayer of the saints in this city. Then you will know what Satan has always wanted to do. I 
I believe in the ministry of prayer it is not the issue of being a Pentecostal the days are coming when it will no longer be an issue of devotion in the morning or praying for a sermon you are praying to secure your children listen let me tell you this day and age listen do you know if your child leaves home to go to school you should pray what happens to that child from the door of your house to school that child is under the tutelage of someone you do not even know by evening he will come back and ask you and ask you questions that you cannot sleep daddy what is this and you say who taught you say my teacher taught me your teacher yes sir controlling powers koinonia is not thriving just because satan does not know we are here is thriving because of the invincibility of prayer fire i said it in the morning that there are departments in this ministry i supervise by myself and there is a reason why because of the strategic role that they play now every department plays that strategic role but because of the spiritual component the prayer department the worship team you always see me on their case with the leaders there is a reason why because let me tell you the truth when these instruments just become music we're in trouble when this singing just becomes entertainment we're in trouble when the prayer department just becomes a place of fellowship we're in trouble and the fire upon the altar that it shall burn day and night most churches have partners financial partners and that's all right most churches have protocol members that protect the man of god most churches have priority you know activities but the things that keep the fire are not there prayer zero worship zero let me tell you something brothers especially honestly if you are a man in this generation and this time and your priesthood ministry is not at work you are about to destroy your wife and children there is no such thing as pray for me again you pray your way and pray the climate open ah my wife and my child mother mary as you go to church pray for me that thing must end it is my prayer that the homes in koinonia don't become like shrines that they become real homes the proof of masculinity is not the huskiness of your voice is the is the dexterity of your priesthood i've advised us ladies watch out for these things in saying yes don't just say yes carelessly and say time is going the urgency on ground requires men and women who know how to burn the incense Please sit down. There are spiritual forces that shape the minds of people. A lady sent me a text recently. She just graduated. As soon as she graduated, she said she's been feeling like tearing her clothes and running on the street. Now, do you think an intelligent person will behave like that? It's a spirit. How many graduates have you seen that the moment they finish on their way going home, a little kekena pep just turned and left them there till a truck came and climbed them? How many people have you seen final exam, final paper, they just find something on the ground and say that's it, you are gone. There is no such thing that is just, it's no coincidence. It's the manipulation of spirits you have an assignment to sanitize your atmosphere let them know you are alive start with your atmosphere sometimes i walk around my house in the night especially when i'm around i'm just walking around my house do you know not too far from my house there is a graveyard i've not seen one ghost one one ghost where will it enter and come to my house I'm dealing with matters of destiny not, not a ghost coming from somewhere what business has the dead the living to do with the dead i even wanted to buy the place they told me that there are, there are graves there ah, apostle don't buy why 
know, you are dead, you are dead. One time, Archbishop Benson Idahosa came and met that they killed a fowl. I think it was an incantation. And he saw it and he gave it that they should go and help him and cook it. <laughs> they had already caught it. Say, why waste? Why waste meat like this in the name of nonsense sacrifice? God does not love wastage. He said, gather the crumbs that there be no wastage. See, let me tell you this. If you do not know the power of prayer, you will fear demons to death. Hallelujah. We sit down and allow spirits to roam around our houses. I know a man, true story, in Joss years ago. He was slapped by, I don't know if he's a ghost or a spirit. He, he works then in the teaching hospital. And he said he used to hear, that means the, um, what they call that place, doctor? Where they keep, mortuary. In the night, while doing his work, true story, you will hear like discussions. You know, like people have woken up and they are talking. True story. And one time he attempted, he shouted, according to him, he said, shut up. And he, I don't know whether he, he wanted to open the door or something. I stand before the God of heaven and I lie not. And the, the, the spirit slapped him until that man died. He did not recover. Spirits are real. Don't wait till you see them. They are real. My mother once told me a story. They went to bury someone. This thing did not, I'm, I'm not sure it's more than six, seven years. They went to bury someone and physically, as they were dropping the coffin, fire, physically, fire came out and killed some people. Not parables, not vision. Fire came out and killed some people. Have you seen people that they buried and you found a man back in your house? All these things will remain when there is no prayer. Just saying, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. That's not the way it works. We are legislators. We enforce things. We don't just wish things. This wishing mentality will cost the church a lot. You no, know, it's impossible. Who am I that the devil will not come? Jesus went to fast. Satan went to join him. He was fasting. Satan was fasting too. He was waiting there for 40 days for Jesus. Who do you think you are that you will not come around your vicinity? From whence comest thou? Jesus asked Satan. He said from voyaging to and fro. There was not a place that he did not go to. Have you considered my servant Job? Yes, I came to his house. It's only that he built a fortification and I could not access hallelujah right now people are afraid seven o'clock people have to lock up their, sh their shops in many areas they are losing in business why because some tout somewhere will come and waylay them and loot and steal money and the church is just quiet don't be like esther but be like esther parakatusiata you sense anything around your vicinity you don't wait to understand what it is tap your wife and say wake up when you do that twice three times one month the devil will know where to pass see let me tell you this whatever you allow to happen to your life don't blame God Whatever you allow to happen to your family, don't blame God. I'm, I'm waking us up that territorial dominion truly happens on the strength of priesthood. Not a need-driven prayer. Hallelujah. I heard of a man recently for one, four years. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be sure so that I don't exaggerate anything. Four years, the wife refused to get pregnant. The man was tired one day. He came back from fellowship. The wife was sleeping. He came and knelt down and put his hand on top of her, her, her stomach and prayed that woman into pregnancy. Wow. 
No, I mean it. If I'm joking, I'll tell you I'm joking. He was tired of this thing and said, no. He knelt down. You just sleep. You are my wife. I'm the one who paid your dowry. Let me face this spirit of barrenness. See, there are times in your life you need to get agitated spiritually and stop allowing nonsense to just happen within your territory, within your family. Hallelujah. I was so encouraged when I heard it. Literally prayed, not like impartation or yet. No, he sat down, knelt down on top of his wife's stomach and prayed in tongues until that report changed. You can pray some things out of your life and you can pray some things into your life. There are times that you can put your job, your, your, your certificate on the ground and lock yourself from 12 to 6 you pray until where you did not apply called you our generation has not understood the power of prayer those who know how to pray are people who do not take no for an answer mm -mm. Mm -mm. they don't negotiate they decide and agree God are you in this if God says yes declare anything that stands the way hallelujah praise the Lord a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian a prayerless territory is a powerless territory a prayerless couple is a powerless couple a prayerless business is a powerless business a prayerless ministry is a powerless ministry please sit down boy our time is gone the first key to territorial dominion is priesthood koinonia pray don't just pray on tuesday pray pray you go back this night trust god for grace even if it's 15 minutes walk around your room a little before you lie down apostle you don't know how busy i am that is the excuse that is the door that the devil will use to enter your life if you search for excuses you will always find one let me tell you this i have taught you and i pray you will believe it master the power of night prayers master the power of night prayers a generation that sleeps all through the night into the morning is a generation that would not be powerful i'm telling you this see there is a time when you will enter your sabbath in experience a young man personally now it's not i'm not saying this is the bible it's my personal understanding that a young man who actually goes to bed by nine to wake up by six and you don't have time for your destiny you are building rubbles the night is when men who are men pray the night is when men who are priests pray the night is when men who are watchmen pray the night is when gatekeepers of destiny pray let me tell you sincerely i have not slept in days like real sleep to take out time and sleep it's a sacrifice you are supposed to get a job that God will use to change your family and your territory and while you are sleeping they send a letter from a parastatal we need these 41 names in the list and there are spirits waiting there to decide what name will be removed and every other person is in a herbal shrine forcing his name to remain there and you are snoring away your your sleep is the marker that will clean your name out of that list you can stay and insist i may not have access to the office but i can pray i can pray i've seen the ministry of angels in my life i know that angels are real i know that they are real when you pray there are times i've tried to look for things and i could not find them and i prayed and slept 
and in my dream i got up and went to where it was and i woke up and went there physically and carried it many of us do not understand the ministry of angels because we do not pray in the name of jesus every prayerlessness and spiritual laziness upon your life i curse it now this night in the name of jesus all the movies internet browsing that distract you i'm not saying they are wrong but if you can sit down and distract your prayer life i separate you from it now it was in the night that jacob wrestled with god and got power it was in the night that god came to solomon and he received something men receive things in the night don't waste your night charge your atmosphere sleep under a heavy atmosphere of worship while you are sleeping you are receiving you wake up in the middle of the night and you know an impartation is ongoing see let me tell you these are not things we are these are things we have practiced for years strong worship in that atmosphere while you sleep and you will keep having all kinds of dreams sometimes the dreams will show you the root cause of things sometimes you are hearing a message and in the dream you will start acting the message you are alive to the message Hi. oh lord help our generation help our generation help our generation in the name of jesus christ hear me if you are a minister of the gospel in this place that means you are in ministry or you are trusting god to be in ministry please wake up i deliver you from laziness hear me ministry is not about suits and agbada and protocol ministry is serious business you know all this and i say this respectfully to our younger generation most of these boys do not understand the gravity of attack that can come to your life when you are in ministry they are just happy and just loiter around in pride one attack will kneel you down you need to be powerful with god are we blessed number two goodness the second principle or territorial dominion is the power of faith hebrews 11 33 the power of faith you cannot take over a territory when you doubt god you cannot take over a territory when you do not believe god hebrews 11 please read everyone one two read who through faith uh-huh subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises stopped the mouth of lions listen the bible says this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith what is faith your conviction your depth of persuasion on who God is and the integrity of his person that convinces you enough to believe God and take action you will need the audacity that faith brings to reign in life life is not for weak people life is not for risk averse people life is for men and women who are courageous enough to storm the gates of destiny the bible says that listen he said that lot and co were hijacked and captured and abraham said what did i hear you carried my cousin gather all the war men and let us go Hi. courage courage faith the righteous are as bold as a lion that lion dimension is not supposed to help you harass people 
the lion dimension is so that you will be able to stand in the face of situations and say you can bring your best shot satan i will still be standing it takes faith to build a church it takes faith to start tv ministry that will bless people it does not take money it takes faith first it takes faith to raise your children we are a generation that is obsessed with guarantee give me a guarantee that you will be there for me there is no guarantee anywhere in destiny please hear me everybody say faith when god called me to ministry i called my father and my mother and i knelt down before them and i told them god has called me all my life i'm going to be busy serving the purposes of the kingdom my parents said god bless you we bid you godspeed go well that's it i'm not doing well because the church i was serving before did not give me money no sir listen let me tell you this faith creates everything out of nothing did you hear what i said your house now is in your faith the money you need is in your faith please learn the laws of faith faith is predicated upon a revelation that god is able the ability of god and his integrity everything looks impossible till faith brings it god will never tell you what you can do you know you have had god when what he says is bigger than you when god told me of the things that you'll be doing with this ministry around the world when god showed me and told me the things that you the power of faith but i know whom i have believed and I am persuaded. Lift your voice and pray. Everyone, please pray. Pray where you are. Pray from the depth of your heart. Sheparatu sali prahaskada balada barush. Shibros kila hasanda la to seliki ashala bros. Embregedela hasabra shila katabradia. Please pray from the depth of your heart. Shila barus herabala da baladush. Pray everyone, you are praying in the spirit. Second, 
Shikabarato sada brada gede balarabu, embretekela prasada balato brada gede balarabu. Shala baranda kata pras gede balato sabra gede balarabu, embrata kapro sede belekete shala paria da balaraba, rapadu sada branda gada baladu. It's a sacrifice you are making for your destiny. It's a sacrifice you are making for his kingdom. Shikaruta Salabara. Two more minutes, pray in the spirit. Shabarada balakata pradegedesh. Shkadebarada balada prakota shada pradegede baladas. Emprata kaparuta shala pradegede balad. Balabu shalabrandi gidi balas, ekete labradu shalabrandi gidi balada balada bo. Sebaru kasi labaha siada balada bo. Alleluia, alleluia. Listen to me. Forget about the temporary inconvenience that you are going through. You are building something for a generation. You are building something that will last. Rain will come and go, but what comes upon you comes and stays. Are we together now? Praise the Lord. Let's continue. The power of faith. Now faith is, the Bible says, the substance of of things hoped for and the evidence the tangibility of things not seen hear me everyone you want to take over territories you will need to believe in God not believe in an uncle not believe in an auntie not believe in an asset not believe in an investment you need to believe in God God is able. I may not know how, but I know that he will build for himself what will bring him glory. Many Christians, and especially our generation, we don't command results because we truly do not walk our faith. We doubt everything and we do not take God at his word. I've given you a little story years ago when I used to bank those days with First Bank. Way before many of these facilities started coming that we now use to make banking easier. Then I would not have money at all in the bank. My faith was that rugged. I'm not saying do it. 
I remember those days I would pray and trust God for miracle alert. And I would stand up and start trekking to First Bank. I would queue for hours believing because I read in my Bible what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believest that thou receivest it. I took it literally. Many times I didn't find anything, unfortunately. But I didn't realize that what I was gaining was more than the money. I was gaining the flexibility of my faith. The, the ability to believe God at his word. Let me tell you this. When you are walking with God, you need to believe God. There are times God will tell you, wake up and go outside. You will go outside and nothing will happen. He will just say, go back. And your going out was profitless, but your faith is being developed. The idea is not for you to go and see or receive something. The idea is an exercise of your faith. So that tomorrow when he says, take this nation, you say, Lord, I'm able. We are well able. Unbelief is dangerous. My only limitation in my life is the voice of God and time. My only limitation in life is the voice of God and time. Time that honors the law of process. If God tells me to walk through this crowd to that door, I will not even see that rain is falling. I'm on my way going. Whatever stands my way, the faith that God gives. Do you not know that faith is a shield? You can use faith as a shield. He said, wherein you will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You are not the first to be persecuted. You are not the first to be challenged by evil spirits. It will take your faith to command victory. We are a generation that loves impartation. And impartation is important. But let me tell you something. There are dimensions of destiny work that impartation will not bring. It's a well you have to dig by believing God. If I perish, I perish. When God spoke about koinonia, I believed him. Enough to take action. When God spoke about the messages, being heralded by his angel, and taking it around the earth, I believed him. Today we've seen all kinds of miracles over our teachings. You've heard some of them. That someone will buy a brand new flash drive from the place where he bought it and take it home, brand new, out of the cave, slot it in, and there are koinonia messages all. How do you explain that? That's what happened when faith. Listen, you will never see the glory of God until you believe. You will never see the glory of God until you believe. We are a generation that is obsessed with guarantee before we move. Your only guarantee is the word of God. The word of God. Everything God told me about ministry, about destiny, I believed him. I still do. I still do. From the days when we could not afford bonds and could not afford a proper meal, I believe that was a career of the blessing. From the day when I could not pray for one person to be healed of headache, I believe that his anointing was upon my life. And I believe that he was going to use me. We are going to pray one prayer. I'm going to change my style of teaching now since there is rain. I'm so happy for the rain because it will take away unnecessary formality and keep you to listen. So now you are going to pray. Help my unbelief. Lord, whatever it is that is killing my faith and not allowing me to trust you. Help my unbelief. I claim that I trust you but it's really my uncle that I trust I claim I trust you but it's really my certificate that I trust I claim I trust you but it's really my skill my gift 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. You are praying it for your destiny. You are praying it so that you can command dominion. Lord, I trust you. The grace to believe you. Believe you for my finances. Believe you to open doors. God is not a man that he should lie. God is not the son of man that he should repent. If he speaks, he is able to bring his word to pass. Please pray, pray. Shila parus kariada balada bada bada. Koinonia pray. He reigns. He reigns. He is standing by my side to bring his word to pass. He reigns. He reigns. My God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Listen, hear me. You need to shake off unbelief from your life today and say, Lord, I believe you. I may let everyone call me stupid, but I believe you. Let everyone mock me and laugh at me, but I believe you. I believe you. Your word is true, and I believe you. When you say I am great, I believe you. When you say I am the head, I believe you. When you say I am not the tail, I believe you. When you say Gentiles shall come to my light, I believe you. When you say their kings will come to the brightness of my rising, I believe you. Listen, there are some of you in this place. God has told you you will stand before nations. But as it is, you look so weak and you will not believe it. You don't know the village I come from. I cannot even speak English well. That's not what God is saying. Believe me and let me take you there. By myself. Years ago, when God told me he was giving me access to kings and people in government, I believed him. Our very first crusade, I demanded to see and let us share fellowship with the king of the land. We didn't have the opportunity to do it the first time. Every one of our crusades that we had gone, I demanded an audience with the kings because God told me he would give me access to kings. I believe God. It's none of your business who my father is. It's none of your business who my mother is. That's not what God said. That's not the condition for his word. I believe him. 
The same way some of you are here and God, you go to bed and you see yourself carrying the baton of generals. You wake up in the morning and say, it's a lie. It's not for people like us. We are the any house. Stop that, that ungodly talk and say, Lord, with all humility, I believe. Let it come. I believe you. It was in Port Harcourt. I was tending to a sick, one of our sick aunties where I was staying in 2007. I was in Port Harcourt and she was on her sick bed. She eventually died. And I was taking care of her in the teaching hospital there. And I was there. We were running shifts. And then from the, I don't know which of the floors now, I just looked at um, the window and all of a sudden I was caught up in a vision and in that vision I saw the international headquarters of this ministry I saw 37 flags and I saw white men I saw nations coming I said what is this and God said that's where you are going I believed him I said let's go oh God let's go I believe you God told me I will never beg one king and beg any man for audience. I believed him. I believed him. I believed him. Do, can you believe God? One day I remember growing up, I told my mother, I said, do not worry about the things that are happening. One day, you will eat and never have to beg for bread again. And it will be in your lifetime. I said it. See, the righteousness of faith speaks. It does not assume. You make statements that sometimes you are afraid. My wife, right now we may be soaking Gary, but in the name of Jesus, we will give to nations. And when you say the devil will speak to your ears and say, foolish man, respect yourself. My faith, it reaches out to you. I believe your word for me today. My faith reaches out to you. I believe. I believe your word for me, word for me today. Listen, one day. I was praying and the Lord spoke to me and said son I will give you a gold mine I believed it literally I know it may have a prophetic meaning but I believed it literally until three years ago when three kings came together to give me 18.5 hectares of a gold mine God said it and I believed it see listen let me tell you this this ego and the feeling of saying let them not say i believed god and it was a lie if you don't throw that thing away to stand and trust god so what if you find out it's not god that said it you readjust and move this ego is why many people will not grow god said it but i'm ashamed i'm afraid let them not laugh at me I remember when God gave me an instruction to empty my entire finance. It was a stupid thing. It was suicidal. But I did it. And God told me I would never beg for bread in my life again. I remember it was in this ministry. God gave an instruction to empty the account of the ministry. Literally 0.00. .00 and I believed him. Stupidly believed him. One week after that. God brought a harvest that till tomorrow we will not recover from. But I know whom I believed. If God says I will give you a house, believe him. If God says you will feed nations, believe him. If God says you will pay the school fees of a generation, believe him. Don't believe your ATM. Let God be true and every man a liar. Please hear what I'm telling you today. This life and this destiny, I stand before the God of heaven 
and may i be forgiven if it's a show of arrogance but there are many things one of the things that god does with me is he mandates me to declare what he said before it happens there are many things that i've said today prof said something here that really touched me um in the morning and he said that one of his daughters he remembered when we were meeting those days on campus and that i said that god is bringing mantle a mantle of people for kingdom financiers and he saw his then little daughter she was rolling under the anointing and he looked at her and was wondering and he said that she got a job and within one year bought a car of over three million and he said he was surprised when god says it he would do it if he did it before he can do it again same god right now same god back now. if he did it before if he did it before When we started the Koinonia worship team, I stopped these guys for many years from going for external ministrations. And I told them, I said, do you know why? I know what God showed me about you. That days will come, you will sing and nations will sing your songs. Stay and be dealt with by the Spirit. Those days, some of them didn't understand because they wanted to go for programs and I said, sit down. Sit down today is amazing the way one by one it's already starting like droplets but it's an avalanche it will come and you will see the songs that come from here songs that will mentor nations songs of warfare songs of victory songs of the throne you see most times we don't believe men till it's too late we say he said it all i believe him i believe you that's why you see me stand to teach you do you know let me confess true confession i was i had a meeting before coming here you know i had a meeting and then um just briefly met with a family and then a woman before coming preparing to come for koinonia and while i was preparing i was so tired i sat down and i didn't know which one to do to eat or to rest and I stood, I was so tired. And I was telling the woman, I said, my God, all I want to do now is to sleep. But I just got up. I said, I rebuke that statement. There is a generation to mentor. There are people to raise. And she said, ah, Apostle, I know you. As soon as you are done with all this talk, the zeal of the Lord that is in you, you will quickly go and prepare and stand up. And truly, you see me standing now. I'm done here and I'm counseling for hours seven in the morning i'm out of this city just to go and just perform a function do a few things and return sacrifice but that happens because god said so god promised me that he will keep me strong and vibrant i believed him you do what i do in the strength of the flesh you will not be sick you will die i say it without exaggeration you literally will fall down and you will die one day my father warned me and said, look, my son, just do your best. Take out time once in a while and rest. I said, I know and I believe I will rest. But the king's business requires haste. There are destinies to be raised. There are impartations to come to nations. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I went to bed to five. It was as if I just turned my head and I checked the time and it was morning the last thing i remember was that i was going to take there was water by the side of my bed and a drink and i remember i was preparing that in five minutes i'll just turn and take a sip and i had slept it was already morning and i got up had to brush up on my notes to come why because when you are about his business he will maintain you There are things you cannot lie about not for long 
it will be clear see let me tell you this god has been faithful to me you see these hands i have laid these hands on different sicknesses and diseases communicable ones i'm not supposed to be alive today based on the things and the people i have touched you must believe god god told me forget about cars and houses focus on me i've raised men already to do that for you i remember when someone came and met me to give me a car i was happy and god said it's not your car just pray for him and let him carry his car and go i wanted to say god the next time you will give me lift <laughs> but i was happy do you believe what i share with you can you spare me five more minutes are you tired i know you are tired you are just passionate but listen let me tell you this you must love tomorrow more than today to enter that tomorrow if you love your today more than tomorrow the door has closed closed by you hallelujah praise the lord when i was in secondary school and the fire of god fell upon us we started a prayer group and a prayer movement called operation katakus yes we would pray sometimes immediately after preps it was supposed to be a little one hour prayer and some of these weak spirited people who are feeling sleepy would just tell them look go to your hostel and sleep one hour it will become a vigil i was made the timekeeper of the school in js2 that was the level of the hand of god that was upon my life quarter to five someone would wake me every day without fail quarter to five that was when i started having encounters with this i didn't even know that they were angelic encounters 15 minutes on the dot to five would tap me i wake up father help this generation in the name of jesus help us to be so consumed by the reality of the realm of the spirit and the power that that realm wields upon this realm all you see is not all there is hallelujah so when you hear a word like you are blessed when you hear a word like doors be open many of us just say amen as a christian response to a man of god's prayer but a few people will believe god and take him literally and said when i said amen i said let it be so where is it oh god i said amen i expect an answer the last that i will give us and then we're done territorial advancement the last key let me five minutes and we are done the power are we ready the power of consistent results one of the kingdom keys allocated for dominating a territory is consistent results let me tell you this consistent results shows that there is understanding consistent results show that there is knowledge consistent results show that mastery has been attained consistent results years ago i started watching a man who would lift people off wheelchairs and crutches as though it was a joke he would stand and look at them and just pray a simple prayer sometimes even be sarcastic about it and throw the wheelchair and throw the crutch and said walk and that's the end of it in in about six years he raised about nine thousand crutches and wheelchairs his his church is full of crutches around the church i said this is mastery i must go down to see him he was in south africa and i traveled he's going to be with the lord now prophet kobus van rensburg 
I traveled to South Africa to meet him and I met him and I told him why I was here. I was not there for, for pilgrimage. I was not there for entertainment. I was there for business. I said, I desire this grace. I desire it. It is a grace. 10,000 crutches cannot be mistaken. No. Many unbelieving members, yet they were also raising crutches. You could see that they didn't have faith. Yet they would say walk and joke with it. You see, many times when the leader that you are under is carrying a grace, you will cheaply receive that grace. Listen, when you receive that grace and receive that dimension, many times you will see how cheap it works. Some of you here who are under this ministry and under this covering, you will go for meetings casually and just say, let's pray. And the power of God is here and it will be as if you are acting drama. And even you, you have not really studied the dynamics of the anointing. Many people started getting prosperous in living faith before they read about prosperity. It was later they found out they were even sinners because they were not tightened. Yet they were still enjoying abundance. Say, okay, Lord, forgive me. Now I'll start doing it properly. Some people were strolling and just saw prayer city prayer was going in and they said let me go and find out what is going on there and from that day they cannot sleep again till they pray because a grace came upon them let me tell you this results are governed by three things one light two please listen results are governed by three things one light two association three graces these are the factors that govern results in this kingdom never forget it light the depth of the spiritual illumination you have as it pertains the area where you want to see result number two association god called abraham and lot went with him and then number three graces if there is any area in your life where you are not commanding results check for these three things one there is a dimension of spiritual illumination that you are lacking number two there is a community of people with that grace that you have not honored and number three there is a dimension of grace that has not rested upon you it is easy to produce results when you know the laws that govern them hallelujah do you know let me tell you as little as this thing our, our time is up as little as what i shared with you is if you understand this mystery my brothers and my sisters there are dimensions that god has cheaply committed to this ministry you will enter into it like a joke you know it pains me when i see certain graces that are so lavishly available but there is no widespread testament of people who have entered that dimension the knowledge you have the spiritual understanding number two your association not just in terms of friends also the covenants the tribe that you come under that you are grafted into and then number three the graces that are upon your life any man who is exposed to these tripartite forces will be a strange man upon the earth when i traveled to south africa to meet prophet kobus van rensburg i'd wanted going to meet robert Lerdan and then charles and francis hunter unfortunately i couldn't meet them i sat down and i listed like an architect the graces that will construct the house i listed them and i searched for the individuals that had those graces like a chef says i need salt where do we buy salt sabo where do we this is how i listed these graces like a bee and i searched for them one by one i was very very foolish at a point in my life i knew that wisdom will be part of the graces that i would need for my life and i would need for this apostolic office i pursued dr miles moon mike Murdoch, and bishop david oyedeko these were the two dimensions of of wisdom that came to my life i saw the wisdom of god at work in their life and i said this foolishness must end i pursued that grace i pursued it with all my heart 
Are we together? Yes. Results. Whoever commands results becomes the leader. Whoever commands results becomes the force to reckon with. I submit to you that many of the dimensions that you see in my life and in this ministry, they are not guesswork. There is an exact knowledge that is back of them. They will continue to be reproduced again and again. When there is increase, when there is the outstretched hand of God, when there is favor, there is prosperity. When there is passion and hunger for God, these are results. Please do not join the people who ignore results. I'm wrapping up. I know the rain is done, but just, just be patient. Make sure as they are coming out, they are still listening, please. You are going to pray for results. Listen to me. I told myself, God, there is no need to be in ministry if I'm not producing results. That you bear fruits and that your fruits abide. Much fruits. Some of you who are visiting this place for the first time will go back and know that God is here. You met him. It's called results. The next time you come, you will not come alone. Let me tell you, empty pews are proof of lack of results. It's an uncomfortable truth, but it is true. Are we together? In fact, empty anything, emptiness is proof that you do not understand the laws that govern you. I knew, I saw the way pastors used to raise money. Now, please, I'm not being sarcastic with all respect and all honor to men of God and the body of Christ. But I saw the way people were being manipulated to raise money. I saw the way pastors, birthday pastor, I'm, I said, no, this is not Bible. But then I asked myself a question, how will you eat? And how will the ministry thrive? And then I said, I have to go to the word of God and find out. And then I found out that God can open a door for a man that no man can shut. I found out that there was an exactitude to the blessing of God. Let me show you one of the most recent scripture I found. 1 Corinthians 29, 12. I apologize, we're wrapping up. 1 First, First Chronicles 29, 12. 1 Chronicles 29, 12. I saw this scripture in my dream. I was sleeping and this scripture came and I woke up and I saw it and I rejoiced. I said, that means God is shifting me to another dimension. Both riches and what? Honor come from you. You reign over all of them. It's a dangerous scripture. Both riches and honor come from thee. You reign over all. And in thy hand is power and might. Look at all the things we need in one verse. Riches, honor, power, might, greatness, strength. God is the owner. I saw it in my dream. I went to sleep home and I saw that scripture. I got up and I searched it. I said, this is this. If this scripture were a clot, it would have faded by now. I've prayed this scripture into my life. See, I stepped into the grace for favor when I prayed for favor for one month. That was my prayer request. Not for a selfish reason. Lord, a man can carry favor bodily. Let me be an example of it. Do you know many times when I pray these things, it's so that I will bring it and you will receive. It's not so much for myself. When I received the grace for long life, it, it was with speed. The day I was coming for Koinonia, it was as if I was going for my wedding reception. Give me a chance, let me stand. These people were singing and I couldn't wait for them to finish singing so that I would climb up. I came with a grace that I did not have. The grace for long life. You can carry grace. It's like a fisherman. When you catch something and you push your hook, you draw it, force it out when you see what it is. Yeah. 
this kingdom is a kingdom of deep mysteries deep mysteries deep mysteries hallelujah both riches and honor come from you thou reignest over all and in thy hand is power and might and in thy hand is to make great look god is the maker of greatness when god selects you to be great he selects you to be the face of a generation it doesn't matter who thinks what or does not think it god has chosen this ministry god has chosen us by the privilege of his grace to be one of the major pillars of what he's doing in this generation it's an honor we receive he made it so results we're going to pray we have to wrap up listen to me koinonia hear me my heart is pained if your life does not command results let it first start from your life then we'll start commanding results over territories was it not joshua that told the son to stand results there are results that can shut down a nation in one day a time will come kings will come to seek the counsel of god from us and say what is god saying he said kings will entreat your favor when god told me he would give me access to kings and i would speak to kings in this nation i believed him listen it's not pride in two weeks i'm going to be speaking to all the legislators in this country in a breakfast meeting all of them gathered in one place the international conference center and i will be speaking to them the counsel of god when god says it i believe it listen it, this thing is not it's not it's not about a man i hope you understand what i'm saying results are powerful if you doubt results then what are you at results you must insist that my fig tree must bear fruit i'm tired of green leaves lord this fig tree must bear fruit he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water whose leaves does not wither is someone ready to pray please take two minutes blast in tongues and cry honor my life with results oh god results honor my life with results please pray
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're wrapping up. In the name of Jesus, the grace that will cause you to reproduce every result you see here, may that grace rest upon your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the grace that will bring you into strange dimensions, wonder-walking dimensions of results, may that grace rest upon your life. I speak upon your life access to kings may that grace come upon you access to kings in the name of Jesus Christ access to kings in the name of Jesus Christ I have set before you an open door I decree and declare the kind of influence that God can put upon a man influence is not a carnal desire it is so that you can rise to a point where the nations can look up to your life in the name of Jesus the grace that can cause a generation to look at a man and follow Christ through that man may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now the grace for strange signs and wonders wonders of the spirit may that grace come upon you now may that grace rest upon you now thank you Lord Jesus every man who must honor and recognize what you carry I speak to them by prophecy in this season and in the name of Jesus in this month of October I command someone must celebrate your grace someone must celebrate what you carry for the sake of his majesty in the name of Jesus I compel men to discern the grace upon your life I compel men to discern the hand of God upon you I compel men to descend the unction upon you. Father, we thank you for tonight. Let the name of the Lord be praised. Let me pray one prayer concerning favor and your finances. Please allow me pray it. God sees my heart. God sees how much I pray for you every time. There is a dimension of the blessings of the Lord that I want you to step into. And the reason is because it will give you the time to serve him. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. The wealth that comes by prophecy, I speak to your life. Carry that grace now. 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 I command your bands to be filled with plenty. I speak wine and oil to your treasury. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The kind of favor that the saints need to rise to the position of influence that will allow them legislate on behalf of the kingdom may the grace for that favor rest upon you enter into prepared blessings let me pray for you multiplied visions and spiritual experiences hear me the spiritual blindness that stops your eyes from seeing what God is doing. I tear that veil now. I decree and declare, everywhere you find yourself, I compel the people there to look up to you as you look up to Christ. Listen. 
don't sit back doubting what you are saying no every utterance is backed by the throne i'm not speaking as a man when god calls men he backs them and that every door you must enter in this season because we advance through the entrance of doors i speak to that door let it be open for you now let it be open for you now indeed it will be said about us that we are a people that the lord has helped marvelously helped like uzziah in the name of jesus father we declare that our territory will come under the influence of your name and your grace we will never give an inch of our territory to the reign of darkness and satan we will stand as watchmen until we see the reality of your power and your glory rest upon our land in the mighty name of jesus christ amen and amen our time is gone you are here and you are saying apostle I want to make it right with Jesus apologize because of the rain we've had to stretch but you are here and you are saying I need a fresh start with the Lord Jesus we have just one minute for you please be careful no moving around carelessly so that we can have those who are coming out to come if you're on your way coming here whether you are inside you're outside I like you to boldly or you are saying apostle I really want to rededicate my life to Christ. I know the implication of this that you have shared. Please boldly summon the courage. Take a step of faith as we clap and salute them. Come and stand right at the altar here while I pray for you. God bless you. People are coming. Celebrate them as they come. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.